Hey there guys, it's Amit and welcome to your second lesson in JavaScript. In this lesson, we're going to look at how to add JavaScript to our project and how to avoid some common pitfalls along the way. If you enjoy the content, consider hitting the like and subscribe button down below and don't forget to click the bell and choose all notifications so you never miss an update. Okay, so now that we've had a brief intro to JavaScript in the previous lesson, let's now look at how to add JavaScript into our project so that we can actually start using it. So first then, let's take a look at our setup. For this series, I'm going to be using VS Code. To download it, you can go to code.visualstudio.com and I'll leave a link to this in the description box below. But of course, you can use any text editor that you like. Let's go ahead and close this. And let's see what we've got here. So for this project, I've created a new folder and let me just pull that in. Okay, so I've called it adding JS to your project. And inside that folder, we've got an HTML file and a CSS file. So how do we add JavaScript to our project? So there are two main ways to do this. Just like CSS, JavaScript can be included internally as well as externally. So let's start with internal JS. So to start writing JS directly into our HTML document, it must be inserted between script tags like so. And this P tag here, I'm just gonna say script. And now we can write our JavaScript code in here. Now, sometimes you might see this script tag with a type attribute. So something like this, it will say type and then text slash JavaScript. However, this is no longer required as JavaScript is now the default scripting language for HTML. So now we can just get rid of this and simply write script. Okay, so let's go ahead and add some JavaScript in here. So we're gonna say alert once again, just like the previous lesson. And let's just say dev dreamer. Now let's save this. And sure enough, we get our alert box pop up here. So this is known as internal JavaScript. Now you can actually have multiple script files here. So let's just copy this. And down here, let's say second script. And let's save this, let's see what happens. Okay, so first the browser displayed our first script here, which said Dev Dreamer. If we press okay on this, then we get our second script, which said second script. So including a JavaScript like this does allow us to use multiple scripts. Let's go ahead and get rid of this one for now. The other thing I want you to note is where we've placed the script. As you can see, we've placed it just before the ending body tag. And what this does is it allows the browser to render the web page before interpreting the script. In other words, it gives the browser time to actually render all this, our HTML, before coming onto our script tag. So that's the first way then. That's how you include JavaScript internally. However, the preferred way to add JavaScript to our project is by creating an external file with a .js file extension and then putting all our JavaScript code inside there. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to press command N to create a new file and then save this by doing command S. And inside our folder, then I'm going to say, let's call this script.js. Now you can call this whatever you like, but it must have this .js file extension, which of course stands for JavaScript. So let's go ahead and save this. Okay, brilliant. So now we have our JavaScript file. Let's now remove our JavaScript from our HTML file here. And now let's go ahead and paste that JavaScript into our new file. Now let's see what happens when we save this. As you can see, nothing's happened here. And the reason for that is, just like CSS, JavaScript needs to be linked to our HTML file. So at the moment, this file and our HTML file are not linked in any way. Now the way that we do this is by giving our script tag a source attribute. So down here, let's just uh, close this out as we're not putting anything in there now. And in the opening script tag here, I'm just gonna say space, src for source. And then inside that, we're going to link back to this file. So it's called script.js. Okay. And now if we save it, sure enough, we get our alert box pop up, which was this code in here. And guys, this is the preferred way to add JavaScript. Writing a JavaScript in an external file allows for several different pages or HTML files to call upon the same script, as well as keeping all our code more organized and manageable, right? This file here, our HTML file should only really be used for HTML. Any other files like CSS and of course JavaScript should be put into an external file like we've done here. Okay, to summarize the second lesson then, we can include JavaScript into our project in two ways, internal JavaScript and external JavaScript. The standard or preferred way to add JavaScript is to actually create an external file with a .js file extension like we've done here. And finally, it's a good idea to place our JavaScript just before the closing body tag so that the browser is able to render the web page before coming onto our script file. Now, the reason why that's important is because we might be referencing our HTML within our JavaScript. So JavaScript can actually be used to change HTML. And let me show you how that's done. So in our script file, let's get rid of this. And instead, I'm gonna say document. And once again, don't worry if you don't know what we're doing here, we will go over this in detail later on. But I'm gonna say document dot get element by ID. 
And basically what I'm doing is I'm looking for a specific element within our HTML file. And what I'm looking for is this one here with the ID of update. So let's go ahead and copy this. So I'll get the element by the following ID. In double quotes, we put our ID in. And then I want to change this. So I'm going to say dot inner HTML. And let's make this say, I have been changed with JavaScript. End it with a semicolon. So now let's go ahead and save. And as you can see, our paragraph text has now been changed with JavaScript. It now says, I've been changed with JS. So now let's see what happens if we move our script tag above our HTML. So let's say we didn't place it here. Let's just cut this and let's place it. Let's place it up in the head tag actually. Right here. So let's save and let's see what happens. As you can see, our JavaScript that we wrote has not applied to this paragraph tag. And the reason for that is because when the browser comes across this script file here, what we're referencing in the file ID of update, which is this paragraph tag here, doesn't actually exist yet in the browser because it hasn't rendered it. The paragraph tag is all the way down here. So this is why it's important to put the script tag just before the closing body tag so that we can ensure the browser understands that, yep, there's a paragraph tag with an ID of update and I can go ahead and apply the JavaScript to that paragraph. Now you can see it works. But now let me explain why this could be a problem. The problem with placing our script tag just before the closing body tag here is that this blocks the loading or parsing of our JavaScript file until all of our HTML is loaded first. Now in this example, we've only got one JavaScript line, but in large projects and sites, it's not uncommon to have hundreds, if not thousands of lines of JavaScript. And if all that JavaScript is being blocked because the browser is still rendering and loading the HTML, then this could actually cause performance issues such as seriously slowing down your site. So here then we've got a bit of a problem. We can't really put the script tag after our HTML, like we've done here, because as mentioned, that could cause performance issues. And we also can't put the script tag before the HTML, because if our script tag is referencing our HTML, like we're doing here, then our JavaScript won't apply. Well, we're going to look at the solution to this in the next lesson, where we look at JavaScript loading strategies. And we're going to be looking at two keywords, async and defer, which are going to help us to solve this problem. So that's it for this lesson, guys. Go ahead and practice. Go ahead and create your own folder and your files. As a little challenge, see if you can create your own alert box and see if you can do what we've done here, where we've taken a text and updated it using JavaScript. Okay, so don't forget to comment, share, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.